Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Cheeky Natives. I think we should get like some music. We really deserve music. Please, can you bless us with some music? Like we need a, like a startup, like theme, something. So let's talk on a lot. I don't know about blessing you guys with music. I know my voice is just an absolutely amazing. I know you think I can do all things. I don't know if I can sing the theme song for the Cheeky Natives. But just stay tuned, you know, Black girls be making it happen, so stay tuned. But I'm so excited for today's conversation. I read this book on a, on a, on a business trip somewhere. And, you know, I was just overwhelmed by, by the, the sort of performance that you have to do in corporate South Africa. And I was, I read this book and literally a breath of fresh air. I messaged the Tokonola and I was like, babes, whatever you do, oh, you must read the book. Huh? Whatever you do, you must read the book. And so I have the great pleasure of introducing our guest today, Nozugo Siotula, who is currently working abroad and who is the author of Christopher, which was a finalist in the Dinan Daily Fiction Award in 2020, and who is our guest today. So welcome, Nozugo, to the Cheeky Natives. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so, 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 so excited. Happy to be here. I love your guys' platform. I, I, I just... I actually wanted this interview the most because I was like, you know, I did, I really did because I just think you you love books the way I love books. You you jam about them the way I jam about books with other people. And so to be appreciated really by this community, it's tops for me. <laughs> I was really interested in like the cover of the book, right? Uh, and yeah. I wanted to know if there's any significance to the cover of the book because I know that the story places quite a lot of emphasis on like family and intergenerational like branching so to say and so I looked at the yeah. cover and I was like I wonder if this is like the like remembrance of like a family tree and like connections and stuff like that so I thought I'd ask you the question about the cover because that's really what interested me yeah you know funny enough the the cover is not I learned this, obviously, I'm new to the world of books, but the cover is not something that I'm necessarily directly responsible for creatively. So when the publishers showed me the cover and they were, they explained, you know, how they got to it, the illustrator got to it, I was actually very happy because it seems like they understood quite a lot of the, the, they interpreted it in a nice way, not too literal, in a way where you could sort of like make up your mind, even if you didn't really understand what was going on, it, it's still aesthetically pleasing, the colors are very vibrant and, and, and beautiful, but I do think, yes, it speaks to the element of of water, uh, the, yeah, the element of water in the book, which is a, a prevalent theme, as well as family and the foliage and the, the, the natural landscapes that a lot of the characters find themselves in. So I think that they did a really good interpretation of that. I was actually surprised that that is something that they would have gone for because I thought maybe they could have, I don't know, like, you know, I just don't, you don't know which way in which somebody's going to interpret it, especially if you hear that, like, oh no, you can't get input in it. it it's something that is like, they already have somebody who designs covers for them. I was kind of skeptical, but I think it worked out great. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. So speaking of the, the book, I'm interested in how the book was written, right? Because it's a multi-character point of view. So you're seeing different people move through the book. And I, I think that that's one of the most challenging ways to write a book because effectively as the author, you need to think of yourself or you need to think of what a violet will say versus a, gen, a romance, et cetera. And so I find that to be quite a challenging way to write. And for your debut, I'm particularly intrigued about why you chose to have a multi-character point of view as, the, as a way to write your book. You know, the thing is, I love long books. Like, I love books that cover maybe like a hundred years or like, I, <laughs> I, I just, I wish people would write books like that a lot more. Like, you know, start from 1919 and then the other character goes to like 2021. I, I think that long span of time is always really nice to understand a, a point, like for somebody to make a point. And for me, that was essentially what I was thinking about. I was like, if I'm really going to make a point about the, the conflicted identity issues that Vuyo has in modern day life, 
I can't just start with her and her life right now, you know, and she comes from a people, she comes from a place, she comes, there's so many things that, that felt like build into a person that it, to me, it's almost always going to be important to, to draw the through line between the present day and the past. No matter how far I go in that past, it can be 100, it can be 200 years, but I always think that the, the, the past informs the present and, and in such a, a beautiful way. And I love this dialogue always between the past and the present, the past and the present, and, and how you basically are always in the moment of things so you you can speak about really heavy things like you know you how can I say this best so for example yes I didn't live through the worst of apartheid but how it exists in me right now and how I've consumed it and learned about it and interpreted it for progress in my life, it's still very much present. So I think that, you know, I'm informed by the things that happened back then and I use it for the present to make the the, the future different, but it's still very much alive. It's not like the the, the, the differences of the past are gone in, completely in South Africa. We're still living in them. I mean, even in your intro, you were talking about <laughs> corporate South Africa. You know, that switching that you do, that's obviously a part of getting integrated or, or learning how to be an integrated society. So yeah, I, that's the, the long way of, of the reason why I love long lines and long stories. And yeah, it is a difficult way, I think. I think it is difficult to write different characters because you have to be true to every single one. And people can feel when you're lying, because especially if it's about people that they know about. They can feel when you're lying. They know because they have an aunt romance in their life. They have, they know of a couple that's mixed race or, you know, they, they can feel. So it's very difficult to, to inhabit those worlds of the different people. But I suppose that's the challenge you put on yourself. Unnecessarily so, <laughs> I would say for me. <laughs> um, I wanted to speak about one of the... Um... I suppose the themes that was quite gut wrenching for me, I remember like reading like maybe 70 pages of this and I messaged her and I'm like, girl, mm -mm, nah, 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 well, hold up. You know, you didn't tell yeah. me that I would be entering this book in this way, right? And that is grief, right? But I want to speak yeah. about the sort of different manifestations of it. And I suppose I start about with a more like kind of apparent one, right? Which is, the book is sent around Christopher, right? And Christopher yeah. passes away yeah. and that there is yeah. that grief, but there's also not the grief of Christopher. There seems to be a grief of like, <laughs> of men, right? That are attached to these women throughout the book, right? So you find that like every now and then someone loses someone, right? And so I want to yes. speak about like oh, grief as a, 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 as a theme that moves the book and moves through the book in that yeah. sense. But I also want to speak about, about the grief of like, for instance, you think about the grief of people leaving, right? So the, the decision that these girlfriend and then wife, right? And we know later on as we go along who she becomes and yeah. who she is, the decision yeah. that she makes. And even the grief of, 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 of the children that Mkulisi kills, right, at school, it right? Yeah. And then also the grief that I thought was quite interesting was the grief between Vuyo and her mother, right? Because yes. in many instances, the grief of the dad passing away impacts the how the mom shows up in the relationship. And therefore, there's a yeah. grief of Vuyo feeling like, I don't have a mother who's fully present in my life. And therefore, there's a part of my, me that I'm not going to fully nurture because this yeah. woman is not doing mothership the way that I think mothership should be done, right? <laughs> and also this woman is so proud about January families, what, 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 what. But at the same time, she's not showing up as a January woman, right? Yeah. And then you think about the more sort of like punchy grief, which was the grief of losing self, right? And you think about Ro Rome Ace, who is romantic. Yeah. And the tragic uh, thing that happens to her. And throughout yeah. the book, it's like, She's just like a figment of herself, right? So she yeah. moves through the book, but like 
she's not there, but she's there, right? So I wanted to speak about that, right? So there's these different ways in which grief shows up in the book, but the different yeah. roles in which each type of grief does to the story in the book. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, as when I was writing the book, I was grieving the, my own self, the basically like the should be of my life. So that's actually the mindset that is that I was in, actually. Like I was, I was, it has, I mean, the book has quite a lot of melancholy, like melancholic haze. And I think that I think my sister was like, why'd you write a book so sad? <laughs> you know, she was like, this book is sad. And and I think it's because I was, I was extremely sad. I was, I was, I got to my mid-20s and and I thought to myself, like, this is this is just, you know, like life I've imbibed the 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 standards of what my life should be and and now I'm so confused and I'm really angry and I'm not angry at I can't be there's no real person whom I can say I'm angry at like I'm just I'm I'm mad at life I'm mad you know and and so that was a very central theme that actually started you know the characters and I thought well if it's going to be a theme this is true for every theme that I put in the book every single one of them, every single character finds themselves by a body of water, every single character faces a loss, every single character faces a moment of redemption. So so also because it's cyclical, you know, you can't be in grief forever, you know, there's, there's the, the, and I don't also want to write a story like that, like I don't want to write a, a, a never never tale of sadness, like, you know, so I, so I just decided that all the characters this is how I'm going to show how you can, how not how you can, I mean, I'm not God, but like, this is how this character is, is going to overcome their grief. This, the, they are going to use their sort of set of circumstances and they're going to overcome it. And also I wanted to highlight how, in, how because all of these people are related, that in one family, this is how sometimes families are. Like we're all going through, similar things like one thing can happen that like for example Ngolisi will pass away but we've been grieving a long time I'm the the mother was grieving an unborn child the 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 Vuyo was grieving the absence of her mother since her sister was never born you know the father even before he passed away was grieving you know himself and the ideas that he had with his own father but we bring this to each other in a way in which we're not telling each other, but we're relating to each other. And in this instance, one would say from the outside that this is a happy family. So how much more in a crazy, dysfunctional, overtly dysfunctional and overtly crazy, quote unquote, crazy family would such dynamics play a role, you know? And I think that that is, was important for me to highlight that, you know, grief shows up in, in little and loud ways and we take it with us. You just you just continue. You live. You make decisions based on it. You learn. You, you know. You 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 moving through it until at some point you find yourself by the ocean, <laughs> by yourself, or you know you find yourself really really brought to your knees by life, and you have no other choice but to transform. And I mean, I love romance's transformation. I think that 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 it made me the happiest because I just felt like in terms of her as a character, she was the one character who from the beginning was very content with herself, you know. So when the world crushed her, it, it was it was a, it was a new feeling for her because she'd never ever been a person. She she had mad she imbibed that that January propaganda and she lived it and she didn't question it and she was a part of it and it was just her. So for her to be crushed like that by life, you know, for me, I I I was always fighting for the for her to come back. And when she came back, I wanted it to be a comeback that was realistic for her sort of circumstances, but also one that like felt made you feel like yes you're on her side like yes you're romance like you you know and also I think that it was important because a lot of the times people focus on romances or they meet the romances of the world not the nobandu nobandu who she really is who she came from that that story is often forgotten about as if like the romance the sassy the loud person is is she came out 
like that you know that's that's what she's had to do to survive but the, like she's a balance of both those things and i wanted to celebrate both those things I think it's interesting that you've said that about romance because I, Nozuka, I didn't feel that. And I even said that to the talk on I felt mm. like Nozuko for me is like a, a life interrupted. And maybe that speaks to, and this is a trigger warning, this speaks to what, what sexual assault does to people and, and the kind of trauma yeah. that people experience. So I actually yeah. felt like romance was moving through this world with like a, a complex, unprocessed PTSD, right? Because yes, yeah. you see her, you see her move on. Of course, you know, there's the period where she almost becomes a shadow of herself after she yes. experiences that assault. And then she moves away because she she can never be herself or become close to what she could be in a space that constantly reminds her of what happened to her but you see her yeah. in this place and she's robbed of so many experiences so I wonder like what it would have looked like for Nobantu to have the kind of relationships with men that we see being explored in the book right like the exploration yeah. the failed relationships the the children those kind of interactions no one while she becomes the the aunt that everybody loves you know who is like the childless aunt who's sort of not attached to anyone and anything but there's a bad story to that and so like for me i i felt like no one was a story interrupted or was a was a dream interrupted i don't know i felt like there were elements of her personality that was so changed by the assault and i feel like that is yeah. such an accurate representation of what sexual assaults does to to some people That's right so that like and and the idea that for example we tell people oh this happened 20 years ago you assaulted 20 years ago just get over it is so false yeah. and it's so violent and it's so untrue right because this is such yeah. a, a character molding experience that you go through right trauma changes your personality it changes what you envision for yourself it changes what you think is possible for you and i i for me yeah romance was such a she was a beautiful character but I felt like so much of who she was also then revolved around other people so putting up this performance of being like the sassy got it together aunt who comes and like mm -hmm. nurtures people and fixes people and sorts people out and I wonder how much of, of that is like a a defense mechanism because of, of what has happened yeah. to her and the ways in which she was unable to to almost fix herself and defend herself and sort herself out at that particular moment when that incident occurs. And I wanted to I think I before think you, you come there because I think it's really interesting what Amma's talking about. And I wanted to, you know, extrapolate from Nobantu's story what she says, right? Which like mm -hmm. sat with me until today so like I can even remember it because just like yeah the shadow of herself so the two things so Nobantu says to this day no man has ever seen me naked and I'm certain mm -hmm. that I would never want to be naked for anyone else but him I am yeah. loose but tied to him for life these are yeah. my vows I'll keep them until I draw my last breath but now I'm leaving the city I had a sister to love and a niece who needs protection it was exciting to know that there would be a life for me after my internal turmoil. I would embrace a different truth, one that would redeem and strengthen me throughout my coming years. I didn't know if he would ever find such peace for himself. It was no longer my problem. I had only one thing left to do, and that was to forgive him. And you think about like just what Alma is saying about like, she's robbed of an entire human experience, right? Yeah. Because of this particular thing. But more than hmm. that, like, the trauma that she's facing is also the trauma that her sister was the one who found her in that position. And now all yeah. her life and all the time she's trying to like, you know, she keeps saying, I, I don't want her to stand in the blood in the way that she stood yeah. in my blood. Right. Yes. So she's yeah. not even dealing with her trauma by herself. She's like trying to make sure that everyone else is okay with being okay with that trauma. <laughs> And not her. Yeah. So the, what Alma was yeah. saying about PTSD is really important because now she's internalizing all these things that she has no place to process because she's trying to be strong for everyone else. Yeah. I mean, for me, that's why. I, I mean, I, I I say celebration, obviously within limits, of course, right? And yes, I agree. I I think the the conclusion of 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 how she the, the how do i say how she ended up in life ended up is is a it is if you say life interrupted yes i would i would agree with that but i think that that is 
the most realistic way in which you resolve that character's trauma. Because if you say that the, this is a book and we're lapsing moments in time in order to get to a conclusion, right? Then you skip the parts where, you know, a person cries this, that, is afraid. You skip all those parts, you get to the part where they're like, talking about this person with another person and they're talking about this event or 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 they're dealing with it really and they're understanding it and they're saying to themselves no I'm renaming myself and I'm and I'm moving forward and I'm dealing with it so that is it's it's a it's a quick fix really but it's obviously not how it happens in real time in real time her story could take 50 years in real time her story could take it, it, it might never even get to the point where the person is, is renamed romance. Like she might re- leave that place and get to Cape Town and literally live there forever and choose a path where that she just devolves and from that place of trauma all the time. So, I mean, yes, it's, it's like a, a, it's a, it's a, a fix for a book. It's, it's made to make a point of res- resolving uh, the situation but yes i understand and 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 i agree i agree that it's as i said like romance was of all the characters the one who was the most satisfied with her life she was the one who was most affected by by the world coming or or, or cruel things happening from the outside to her because for her she just had she was so naive even it happened how well, she's, she, in her mind, says she let it happen, you know, or it was her fault. Like, she puts it in, and every single moment that led up to that moment, she views it as herself. And even her conclusion of it is like, no, you know, when, when her sister chose somebody else, she was basically leaving her in that moment by herself. So she, it's, it's still a thing that she feels like, no, don't leave me by myself. Otherwise, if I am by myself, then it means it's, it's my fault. I caused it. You know what I mean? But she resolves it somehow. And I don't know, it's, it's a difficult thing to talk about because as I say, this is one character, this is one example, this is, this is a, a, a way in which I'm trying to address this issue. But at the same time, it's also something that is like, in real time, you know, that is, it, it doesn't have a perfect it doesn't have a perfect way out. There's no, it, it's, it's always going to be messy how somebody lives after this moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wanted to talk, I think another big theme in the book is this idea of like family, right? And, you know, we are January's when Vuyo was going through the it. Propaganda. She, she the propaganda. She needed to go back. <laughs> and she needed to go back and she's just like, yeah. yeah. But Often I think in like these family structures, there's like this overwhelming feeling of having to perform. And if you don't yes. fit within the mold of what, you're, what a January is supposed to be, you're sort of like pushed to the outskirts or you become yes. like the help of your family, mm. right? So like yes. we have a shop, you are the one who will do the deliveries and you will do the what, what, because when you couldn't get yes. anywhere and you, you will, you will, you will basically work your keep in this household, right? Because you are not, you didn't go to university, you didn't do this, you want mang, 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 mang. But closely connected with this overwhelming idea of family and like how it doesn't create space for people to move and find their own identity is also this idea that I think you try to elevate in the book, right? Often when we think about like South African stories and we think about Black people, we think about Black people who don't have money and the families come from poor environments. But what I think you also try to elevate in the book is this, that a family like January exists in a place like the Eastern Cape, right? Where they've always had like land, right? They've always had some Mm -hmm. form of like wealth that passes through the generation. So you find that like some of these people are not even working because they don't have to because our family has money, right? And like, I can participate in the family money so I wanted to put those two ideas next to each other right the idea of like yeah while it's great for you to live in this idea of black generational wealth there's also this idea that like you are suffocating because like you are supposed to be a particular person because you are January and if you're not you'll have to earn your keep to be this January 
But also yeah. to to add to that, so there's also the idea that it's it's very particular for the woman in in the January family. So there's a thing yeah. about matrilineal lineage, but also the expectations on the woman in this family are particularly suffocating. So January women have to be resilient. January women yeah. have to be strong. Yeah. They have to have it yeah. together. Because if we're being honest, January men in many ways are messy, right? They they are an entire mess <laughs> and thingy. Yeah. You know? so they're messy they're problematic and and the standards the moral standards for behavior that are held up are not quite the same for january men as for january women so i want to contrast the idea i want to add that that additional layer of what it means to because in in black families that's often the case right so the women in families are often expected to move in particular ways so you must be the daughter that doesn't embarrass us you must be the daughter who goes on to represent as well because women from this family move in a particular way and the expectations for men are often just below the ground you know if if they exist at all so if they they live they're fine yeah if they if they what sorry i miss that if no, they, no, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just agreeing with you that just them existing is, is enough. Like you're yeah. here, you're the man. Yeah. It's and, sufficient. And just, just be, yeah. you know, but yeah. January women must be this all encompassing, you know, you're not allowed to have mental health problems. You are not allowed to experience grief. You need to just get it together. You know, we get it together and getting it together is what kills black women. <sighs> You know, my, my, in, in my life, that is what I want people, like, I want Black women to lose themselves from the idea of we are strong. No, the idea of we are strong for me is an idea meant to keep Black people or Black women in particular, and in a position of of advantage it's a way to say you can endure hard things so we will do hard things to you you know and i and i just think that like i don't think that that is it, it it's not a human feeling you know it's not nice it, it, it's not it's not how i would like i don't want somebody to be slapping me across the face or you know hurting me or whatever that's not how <laughs> how i want to live my life so why do we as a group of people people now not even literally just before we're black before we're women why would we want that to be happening to you you know and then now we take that and we wear that as a proud coat you are strong no strong for what 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 am i strong for you know and sometimes i wanted to in the book to also highlight the, the how community can asphyxiate a person because we love also you know obviously i i grew up in a huge family so this idea of like you know you you're one part of a big whole it it, it was my it was my i don't know <laughs> it was what i ate every single day and so at the end of the day you find yourself being like here we are in this huge huge system I don't even relate to half of all these people, but we're supposed to all be one part of a whole and you're just supposed to participate even when things you you can see that like the people who run this machine, the people who hold it up, it's they're just running on low, but because they're supposed to, you know, carry the whole is part of the community. If we move together, then, you know, we're going to get better every single generation. There are problems with this kind of thinking. And I, I, I don't I I think it's not challenged enough because people say it's African it's our culture you know so whenever you you know you just like but do we do is this okay is this something that we as a community feel like because it's always been done or you know it works or it favors a certain group of people why rock the boat you know and these are ideas that I think are we have to challenge community because there's nothing wrong with community. I think it's great, but I think that there is something wrong when there are certain people who carry the community a lot more than other people. You know, if we're going to have roles for women that are so clearly identified and are known publicly by everybody, then let's also loudly also say what are the roles for it. And also, maybe not. That's also another thing that I was I, that sometimes I think a lot is why? Why do we have to highlight that a man must and a woman must and children must? You know, why, it, it, why can't it be that we have tasks to do and whoever is fit for the task do the task you know and you know someone will say 
that's a dream world, blah, 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 you know, but this is the kind of problematic thing that happens is, yes, on one side, the highly individualistic capitalism by yourself, bootstraps life, it, it has, it has a very obvious negatives, but then everybody touts like the communities in the world that live in a communal sense always say, oh, this is a better way of life. But when you look at it, is it really, is it, how many people in that space can talk about feeling lonely, can talk about feeling like, you know, they, they don't want to be married or they don't want to live according to whatever is done, was done by the generation before them and be free to do so. And that choice be accepted and not be questioned and brought up as a joke every single time in, 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 like in the family setting. Or if you fall below the bar, you're not now going to be the person who everybody thinks, well, you're not doing anything with your life, so we're just going to use you as, as our lackey. You know, the, the, this is sometimes the part where it, it's like, yeah, you're safe, you're eating every single day, you've got a thing to do, but the community is actually the one, your own people, you can't speak out against them. You can't, there's no tribunal that you can take them to because they protect you and they feed you and they clothe you. And, but so you're stuck. And so you don't have any, what I would say, literal rights in the space to speak and express yourself. And yet you feel, I don't know, like you feel aggrieved. So it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. And, and it's hard for people to accept that there is something wrong sometimes with community. Community sometimes is, it's, it's almost better to be by yourself because at least you can guarantee peace as opposed to, you know, like being attached to a group of people because of history, culture, language, I don't know, fam family. I mean, it's also interesting to think about like a large part of reading the book, I thought, whoa, I wonder if, the author is writing this book in his class, all right? And like, we're reading it in English, right? Because, and I wanted to speak about that, right? Like just this idea of like the texture and the feelings of the book is in a language that is not written in, right? Because I felt a lot of that. Like I was like, ah, oh, damn. Like, I wish I knew how to read his class and this book was written in his class because I felt like some of the... The sort of softer yeah. and deeper moments of the book would have come better in that texture, mm -hmm. right? And I wanted yeah. to speak a little bit about like language, right? And also just to connect the sort of Afrikaansness of it in, in the book, because a lot of it is also elevating that element, right? Like we often think about like how Africa, how people speak about Afrikaans as this like kind of white language, but we think about like lots of like people and how like Afrikaans is a black language right and in many instances it is. Like, it is. a lot of us are like polyglots who speak Afrikaans and who are part of the fact that we, we we speak Afrikaans so I wanted to speak about that right the sort of texture of like writing in English but actually writing in, in East Coast all right and also like weaving Afrikaans into the story and what that achieved for the reader but also for the story but to add to that, also making particular decisions, Nozuga, right? So yeah. uh, not, not translating, for example, particular concepts, because there are books that you can tell have been written for, for a particular gaze. So the author wants to almost translate their lived experiences and, and even the language for people who yeah. would ordinarily just not, not relate or not understand, right? But the book is written with a particular deliberation in the sense that you don't do that right so you don't yeah. you don't feel or you don't it doesn't come across that you've wanted to translate for people who may not necessarily speak the language or who may not understand the culture and that's a very deliberate that's a very deliberate act right so when you think about how yeah. books can be written books by black authors sometimes people feel like they need to write for a white gaze so for the kilani reading book club that is then going to buy your book and talk about it on a particular radio station yeah so even that is is an interesting act for me you, you know for me it's very very hard the idea that First of all, I, I mean, I, I can't write in this cause. I would love to. I would love to. It's, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's, it's the, my upbringing, I suppose. It's unfortunate. But I, I obviously grew up in a Kosa context and I grew up in a, in a Kosa 
colored Afrikaans context. So that is, it's my lived experience, right? And so I, I often enjoy when that experience is translated as if like, you know, you added Afrikaans because you're trying to do the reconciliation thing. And I think, no, I was, I was saying that, no. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just saying that, like, for me, the the exploring how Kosa and colored people and Afrikaans and Kosa lives side by side and and how it's normal and isn't, it, it's, it's not an urban thing, definitely. It's something that I, I saw growing up when I saw when we went to the Eastern Cape. And I just thought this in, in the urban setting is always so divisive or not divisive, but like, I mean, it, it exists in a more divided kind of way. Like Afrikaans belongs to certain people or, and they have total right to it. And then I know of a different reality and this reality isn't necessarily almost always spoken about. And I just wanted to speak about that. And I mean, it's, it's important to me as a writer well, as a, a budding writer to or to tell our stories as they are. I, I'm I'm not interested in in our stories becoming, you know, sort of an African story. I, I, I think there's too much of that that happens where, you know, really good books get essentialized as mm-hmm. like this is if you want to know about Africa, this is the book. And I just think that we have such a wealth of writers, a wealth, a wealth, a wealth of writers who are very interested in telling stories as they are, you know, and really good writers. Some of the East African writers, really, really good writers who come out of that part of the continent writing stories as they are for, for, you know, for, for African audiences. And those who don't understand, well, you know, you, you'll figure it out. And so it's, it, it's important. I think it's important. That's the, that's the most important thing, because if you lose that, then, you, then we're just in the global marketplace competing as, I, I, I don't know, we're, I don't know what we're actually competing as, really. I don't know, because then the, the book is not necessarily true to the people in South Africa. So if you, Little Anola, and you, Alma, can't relate to my book in South Africa, no point in it making it in Los Angeles. No point. Because then it's, because the point is, it's like, it's it's like it's not about LA and if somebody was writing about LA they would write about LA they would they will they will fit in all the complex things about Los Angeles that makes it special so I want to write about the things that are not spoken about or or that I feel are not spoken about in my country the things that I love and the things that I grew up around and that that I don't think people know about or they misunderstand like like you rightfully say that Afrikaans is is a is a black language but it's somehow morphed and belongs specifically only to a certain group of people so but that's also governed by history and it's they they enacted laws to to make it that way so we also understand that part mm. so i i am so intrigued by the the love stories in this book okay they are just messy 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 romance two stories in particular right because also the men that these women love are are flawed in very real ways dodgy dodgy those men are <laughs> okay, dodgy policy isn't dodgy though is policy dodgy is he is he really well is he really is he really is a whole, I don't want to even like, like, like he literally woke <laughs> up one day he and he was, No, but, but let's talk about it. There's a conversation to be had there because then it also means, it also means that we must accept that we've got a, a history that is very complex and that is very flawed. So exactly. who you regard as a hero yeah. today would mm-hmm. not have been a hero 20 yeah. years ago because they bombed, <laughs> they bombed a particular place. No, it's true. They bombed a particular the place. Is that... shaking his head like, no, no, no. The children. No, it's true. People. I mean, we must talk about it because who we regard as like heroes today, 30 years ago would have been called terrorists, right? Some of your particular oh, faves mm-hmm. who, who, get, who get romanticized as being like the face of peace and all things goodness, 30 years ago were being called terrorists. And what is, what is the cost of freedom? Yeah. What, is, what is the cost of freedom and what, is it, what does it look like? So he's flawed. Is he, is he an amazing person? Does he do, does, is he a, a good person who does bad things yes and that's a that's a conversation that we can have but i don't know that we can just essentialize the conversation to 
he's bad because he did X at a particular point in his yeah. life. Christopher, and, and, on the yeah, other I hand, think that's, I think that's Christopher is trashy. Christopher is is, is Christopher trashy. Is, Christopher is a bad man. Christopher is a bad man. I, Christopher I, is I'm, bad I'm and he's predatory. Yes, I'm always in agreement with everybody. Anybody who even reads the book and says, oh, but he was, I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> is this why you, no. is this why, <laughs> Is this why he he drowns? Because I I was I was hurt. Okay, so I I must be honest. I I am I'm, I'm a, like a dodgy character because I thought Christopher was like you know I was like Christopher is such a mess. Okay, but when he drowned, I was very upset with you, Nuzugo, because I was like, who does this and why would you do this? You know, so I am very conflicted. I must be honest, Little Konolo. I know you're judging me, which is fine. I don't care. I'm not Nobody judging can you. judge me. All Nobody I'm can judge is- me. But. <laughs> Christopher deserves what he got. That's all I'm no, saying. No, okay, Christopher. I don't know about that. Christopher deserves what he got, but did Vuyo deserve what Christopher's hey, drowning you, means? That's what about the grab that I have with I don't, Is that why he drowned? I, I don't the know. Grab, the grab is that, that why you drowned him? him? No, is that why you drowned him? The On a serious have... note, though, the question really oh. for me is around why why the why you wrote such complicated love stories for the January woman, you know, because it felt like at every single generation, none of them could catch a break romantically, you know. So <laughs> if it's if it's not romance experiencing assault at the hands of her of her lover, it is totally see being, you know, an anti-hero according to the but then <laughs> also also then dying so so tragically right in ways that really yeah. fundamentally alter the relationship between his wife and his child but then also Vuyo experiencing the death of a spouse when she is eight months pregnant with twins and it's like at every single generation January women romantically can't get a break but they also love these deeply flawed problematic men who just do a lot for free so I'm so very th- interested in the love stories in the love stories in this book, but also the added elements of interracial dating. Because there's a thing about Christopher being an older white man who yes. decides to date yes. Buyo and the trajectory of their relationship. I also like the wit in which you made the interracial relationships work, right? Because there's a, a whole conversation about like, why are you marrying me? You know, my dad thinks you're racist, yeah. da, 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 da. And he says, I have black yeah. friends, right? And like, yeah, in yeah. truth, like, I know you made that in jest because Christopher gave a deeper reason about yes, like why yes, he would yes. get married. Yeah. But yeah. you are right. Like, there are people who would be like, because I have black friends, my babes, like, like let's get over it. Like, but I yeah. suppose connected to Amma's question about the messy, right? It's also, hear me out, hear me out, <laughs> a rejection of more functional loving, right? So you find yes. Sakile, right, who shows up in the book and Sakile for all intents and purposes, yes. like a, a perfect yes. person, an archery, yeah. the parents love him. He shows up at very crucial moments in, in Vuyo's life and is there and is present. Yes. But Vuyo is like, nah, I want Messi. Uh, nah. I want passion. I want this. So yes. I wanted to speak about that, right? So the stories are about like, these women who make decisions to be with these men who are viewed as problematic and are messy. But there's also a disavow in truth of Vuyo, of Sakile, who can offer sort of more sustainable loving, if you can call it that. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to Would speak you about want that. to date Sakile though? Like be, be I, I honest. Wouldn't, I wouldn't. Be honest. I wouldn't. Sakile, I don't even know. <laughs> like Sakile is problematic. I, felt like you know at that point you you were criticizing the nice guy trope i was here for it right because sakile is this nice guy and he like moves in particular ways that just make him nice right and he almost weaponizes that i'm a good guy i'm nice what kind yes. of things would that have been Which like so you very patronizing it's very yes. Be it's honest, even you wouldn't want Sakile to talk about safe love. What do you think about Sakile? No, he was probably nice things played out. Like, please come to the table with more than I'm a nice guy. Please, no. But can I tell you? You can't even be held accountable, right? Because no. you are a nice guy. You are a good yes. person. Oh yes. my gosh, you are just so supportive. Please exactly. be be human, right? And give yeah. me space 
to also then be human because now I can't even be human because how dare I sit at the altar of niceness and not just bow exactly. in you like reverence and all things mm. nice. No, and my, oh, I, I, Sakile had to go. He had to no, go. Sakile had to go. He's like my favorite. Had to go. And good luck to him. He's probably off like having a nice life with his nice girlfriend somewhere else. But he had to go. Like, or maybe but, he even gained a little bit of something just to, you know. I don't know, like just, just stop being a, a self-righteous un- human. He just yes. became a person. Yes. And he realized he ain't all that in the shop. He ain't all that. Ooh, haters, haters. Really hate man. <laughs> but you know what was really fascinating about the Sakila character is that yes. even like romance could not be herself because as I, much I, as I we're talking him. about about the nice guy, there was also a hint of like sensitivity. Like he would not have been able to take a joke as a joke, right? It would like be quite serious, right? But it's <laughs> it was fascinating because I'm not necessarily saying that that Vuyo should I'm just saying there was a rejection of what seemed like a a better option I in the eyes of society. I understand, I understand yeah. exactly what you mean. The, the importance with at the at the end of the is why. For, is why like the whole everybody goes through what they go through because we are determined to herself that this will not be their life like she 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 goes there and she performs a ritual to say goodbye to to accepting you know like not knowing who i am so not knowing what i deserve and so i think that that is the the through line between the women like the women of of january have being loved for being sassy and spicy and and resilient and all of these things but perhaps in the new generation this is not who, what we must be known for we can still be beautiful and we can still celebrate everything about us that is that moves us forward but it doesn't have to be rooted in things that that like cause so much pain or or like you know, are rooted in pain and then we go and we fight for them. I mean, my mother literally had a nice life. Will's mother had a nice life and she decided for herself, like, no, of all the guys that I could find in the world, let me just hang on to this raggedy bit over here, you know, because she just thought her life was a little bit too, like, a little bit too comfortable, you know, and that was her revolution. Are you mad? Like, are you serious? You know, and and the, and and I think that it's this I kind just want of to say, thinking. Nozuko, it's when he was walking into the felt after the fire that she said, Yeah, I want this man. Yes, yeah. isn't that a metaphor for life, though? Like, how many red yeah, flags that is, have you that seen? Is exactly how, it happened. how many red flags have you seen? And you just thought it was a carnival. Come now, like, yes, you're like, Ah, exactly. it's just a carnival. But we have to talk about Christopher and Vuyo, guys. It will actually be, it will be remiss for us not to speak about Christopher and Vuyo. I, because I love how she said, I drowned him. <laughs> <laughs> you drowned him and it's okay sis own it own it you drowned christopher what it's okay he deserved what he deserved. Manila, you are so trashy in this moment for that comment. <laughs> but i forgive you it's okay i will release you spiritually <laughs> they must it's be honest about about what, it's about it's about this moment when vuya is about mm. to finish her law degree mm-hmm. and this christopher sits her down and says i yeah. don't think it's going to work out you want to get someone to marry one day and i can't yeah. give you that so, but it's the truth. Yeah. Also, Vuyo, Vuyo wasn't also Vuyo wasn't Vuyo wasn't unaware of the situation. And I think that this is a exactly. point, right? Exactly. Vuyo she walked, walked, no, she walked yeah. into a situation where she knew that this older white man was her professor. He was married, yes. and she knew about the nature of their relationship. And there is an yes. agency that she exercised in walking into it. Exactly. And also. Christopher gave her the truth. He said, I'm, I'm married. I'm, I'm exactly. not in a position to give you what you want. And like, there is an honesty. Sometimes love is honesty. I can see what you want. I can't give you what you want and I can release you. You can then decide yes. if you want to continue or not. So Vuyo was not a passenger. Vuyo was driving that. that and, and you accept, if you, if you accept what I say, that I, this is what you, get, you can get you then must also take responsibility for all the emotions that flow from you. Exactly. You, you, you know, you know that's all you're going to get. What that's about it. Christopher's wife? Like, why, why yeah, is not catching feelings? Wife? 
That's about the fact question. that Christopher's wife. What about Christopher's wife? Yeah. So now we're all like, oh my gosh, huh, you know, Christopher's so trashy. Yeah. She was yeah. she was a willing participant. She stepped into that situation. She was very happy when she when it suited her and the terms of engagement suited her. When yes. the terms of engagement no longer worked for her, now yes. there is like this this pain that we must feel and this compassion. Yeah. Where was the compassion exactly. in the beginning when she was initiating the exactly. terms of engagement? Like yes. Yes. Christopher's you know, trash and so enough, is Vuyo. She's tra- they were yeah, trash and, and, that's and, why it works. The funny thing is the, the funny thing is that there are people who have like spoken to me about the book and who, who like who will make as if like Vuyo, wow, like her man treated her. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Do not be under the illusion that a, a, a 22-year-old girl with a flat stomach and a nasty body and I'm very aware of how she looks doesn't have agency she has complete agency she, she knows exactly what she's doing and so at the end of the day she she thought her beauty and her 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 thing was a novelty and she 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 and she thought also it was power you know mm. and and so the and and this is also part of her 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 upbringing where you just take what you you take what you 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 can because what are you you're a january woman nothing exactly. stands in your way right like exactly you, you, you can get whatever you want to the detriment of everybody else and even more than that not 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 only are you a january woman who's being raised by this woman who has this sort of fire and revolutionary spirit mm. your dad also spoils you so where mm. are the limits here to to your life there are no limits so of course a married man is exactly who you're gonna want that's exactly who you're going to want. You're going to want a white, highly educated from the top, exactly. top university. And you're going to just be like, I dethroned the wife and I got him. And what do you get? A drowned husband. You get Christopher. But also, this is not <laughs> to ignore the power differentials, right? So it's not to, it's not to ignore yeah. that this was a highly yeah. inappropriate relationship. Christopher held a position of power by, by the fact that he was older. He was highly yes. educated. He was somebody that yes. she deferred to a lot. And this yes. is not to ignore those power dynamics. But it's also to say she had agency in the situation. And there's a thing yes. about denying women agency in the situation because we don't agree yeah. with them. That we yes. need to be careful of, right? But I think yes. it's funny. And There's you know, they loved each other. Oh, you know, was it they perfect? Also did. Of That's it also wasn't. very true. That was no, 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 they loved each other. It was sad that they that loved Nozugo it. drowned him. It was what he deserved. Uh, wow. So for I'm me, hurt by his drowning, Nozugo and the <laughs> I don't care what you guys say. I am hurt by his drowning. Was he trashy? Was he problematic? Yes, I'm still hurt by his drowning. Did he and drown? The hill. Yes. I'm so sorry. This I, is the hill I'm dying on. Why did he drown? I, I, Why did you drown him? I thought he drowned because he had to. Because <laughs> he had to. I mean, he had it to, worked. He had to go. It worked. It had to go. He had to go somehow. And I didn't know. I mean, anything else below everybody else. I mean, Tony so had the, the girls and the bombing, and, you know, we were, I mean, Romans had her tragic situation. So the only thing that left was water. So I don't know. <laughs> But why, why, why did he, okay, so why did he have to, I'm really invested in this, guys, I'm sorry, why did he, (laughs) why did he, he have to, John, and I'm interested in that as as a point of character development, because I think when you think about how their relationship started, he was somebody that Vuyo deferred to a lot, he was almost this, like, father figure, the ways that we see a lot of times when younger women marry men who are particularly older, and positioned in particular ways in society, and I think that when he drowned, Vuyo came into her own in ways that she would not had she always had him she would have never yeah it was like a continuation of the father-daughter relationship but with with them and I think that in romantic situations that's always interesting to witness so I understand why you drowned him but I'm I'm still hurt I'm I'm, I'm sorry what I wanted to say Nuzuka is that you made a very important point about Vuyo right and like sort of this genuineness and this arrogance because remember, there's a scene where she finds one of Sakile's friends masturbating in Sakile's bathroom. Yes. He yes, says, yes, yeah. oh, obviously, he's masturbating to the idea of me, right? Like the fact that he, he, he exactly. decides to hit me, right? And Can so you, you, are, you are right about the idea that like, in many instances, I think she was cut not by the fact that she wasn't going to date Christopher, but she was cut by the fact that, like, I've had this man for four years and now suddenly he decides yeah. that he can't have me. Like, how dare yeah. he, right? And, yeah. I mean, 
Girl, I know. I think, they were all governed, I, think I think all of them were governed by, uh, I, I mean, from inception, besides romance, all of them were governed by wrong thinking because, well, maybe even romance as well, you know, because it, had she not had her experience, she would have been, I don't doubt one of those aunts that finds herself with there in the rural areas, she would have grown up and become one of them. Like those ones that just shout and just, you know, they, they're hitting everyone and anything and, you know, like you better abide by the rules. So I think it's, this, it's, it's kind of wrong thinking. It's the, it's the wrong thinking of thinking that like, you know, you know we, we're born this way, this is who we are. This is, being a January is not a personality. It's your surname. It's, it's it's your surname so you don't have to find a way to build legend like into your surname just because the legend exists around you know and I think that all of them betray themselves in this way you know mm -hmm. and that's also what leads to the mess because you 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 nobody in life can live without limits you, you, you there's no such thing you can't be this huge boundless thing and you take whatever you get you get everything that you want to the detriment of everybody else and i i think that that is the humbling all of them like that is life dealing with them but it's also part of their wrong thinking that they have to heal they they have to understand that life is talking to them through the through the thinking that, that they have that they own so yeah that was that was part of it I wanted to spoil the last part of the book but you know what because I love the cheeky natives I'm going to get them get the book and just be shocked as I am about the last situation because just before the yeah. podcast I said um like I, wait, no, no, no so no, we have to talk offline because that was like the source no. of some trauma for me okay, <laughs> no okay. we will talk <laughs> offline about it so, no yes. so guys suppose before we go what do you hope Christopher will achieve and what do you, what dreams do you have for Christopher who, who drowned? You know, I did like, Jesus is watching you. Okay. Jesus is watching you. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I, I am, you know, a debut novelist. I've always wanted to write. I'm an avid reader. So I would hope that the way in which books like Sue and, you know, like, I don't know, books like that like books that are that that have literally inhabited my soul for many many years that I go back to and I read lines off that I quote and and I say I hope it lives like that in other people you know that because for me really when I wrote that book I really was say goodbye to whoever I thought I was going to be for since I was 15 years old you know like I I had one track mind about my life until I decided that no life is is open and it's limitless and you can change your mind and find yourself being somewhere else in a couple of years after you've changed your mind and I think that for me Christopher was just a testament to say I can change my mind and I don't have to be what generations before me have been and that's a brave thing to do I hope it makes people brave I hope it makes them be like Yes, I see everything that I've been given, but I want something else. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nozuko. It's been absolutely a wonderful... Sure, that's such a timely, timely way to end it. I see what everybody else has said and, and this is what I want for my life, right? And what a yeah. what a declaration, right? Because that's an act, that's a that's a revolutionary act for a lot of yeah. black people to say, I see what has been the societal standard and I choose something different unapologetically. Yeah. So I, yeah. I mean in the wise words of Maxine Water, reclaiming my time, reclaiming yes, my time. Yes, yes. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, Nozuga, for really what is in such a, a powerful conversation. I think I have forgiven you for drowning, Christopher. I, I'm, I'm, I'm at a place Nozuka, of... Nozuga, I support mm -hmm. your decisions. I support your decisions. I, just want to be, I, I have forgiven. And actually, after this conversation, I've forgiven Nozuga for, for drowning, Christopher. But it really is to, is to thank you for such a powerful powerful book I think you know there's something about writing the kind of debut that makes people want to have conversations around your book and we can't wait to see what's next we can't wait to see what what book comes next we know that this will not be the last one and we really are just wanting to extend a lot of gratitude to you and to wish you all the best. And we're super excited to have you on the Cheeky Natives again in the future with your next book. Uh -huh. 
I will be so glad. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all I can say. And thank you for um, also like waking up in the morning. I know, uh, you know, I was, we had a good time. I, I hope, I mean, I was kind of, the whole morning I was literally freaked out because I was like, you know, when you really, really want something, sometimes it can go a little bit weird. And yeah, I was just hoping that the vibe was right and the vibe was right. <laughs> so. Thank you so much Zupo, for, I suppose, firstly, writing Christopher, but also being so open and candid with us about some of the decisions you made with the characters. I think it's really important oftentimes to get in behind. It's like the behind behind the scenes, right? In many instances yeah. to be like, okay, this is why I made this decision. And this, even this decision hurt me, right? Or this decision surprised me. So thank you again, you natives. We want to encourage you again to get Christopher, which is published by Jakarta Media, which is written by <clears throat> Nozuko. And I, I mean, we can hook you up. If you want us to, you know, get you a copy, you can just email us and say, hey, y'all, I listen to the podcast. I love this book. Can you hook me up? And then, you know, the Cheeky Merchant will come through for you at your doorstep. But again, thank you for supporting us. Please, please, like what we will encourage you to do is listen to the podcast and leave a comment and say, oh, I love this. Oh my gosh, Nozuko's laugh is fantastic. Yes, Nozuko on this. Yes, Alma, I also support you in forgiving the Tokonolo. You know, just engage with the podcast. <laughs> But thank you once again. And again, until next time, Cheeky Natives, we love you and we appreciate you. Please. So until next time, bye.